talk in the horror franchise Wednesday. Let's move on to Wrong Turn 5. The Bloodlines. That's what Part 6 should have been called. This one is also written and directed by Declan O'Brien. And this tells the story about dipshits getting killed one by one. There you go. Quick. There's no need for a plot synopsis. All right, so <clears throat> here we go. Let's get the positives out of the way very quickly because there's only two things I like about this movie. First up, nudity. Beautiful women getting naked. What's not to like about that? Number two, the kills and the gore. Fantastic. They're just brutal. There's a scene that's like misery on steroids where the guy gets his legs like hit with sledgehammers and his bones are breaking. You got heads getting chopped into bitty, itty bitty pieces. People getting cooked alive. Great kills. So great kills, creative, memorable, gruesome, practical effects, hardly any CGI, people getting fed their own guts. It's insane. So there you go. Those are my two positives. Let's move through this review quickly so I can move on to part six and get this shit over with. All right, so negatives for this movie. We got the same composer. This is a, my this is my uh, nitpick, let's say. So I don't like the music in all these movies, especially like part two has the best music in score and soundtrack overall. But three, four, five, and I think six all have the same composer who is copying and pasting his music in every single movie. It's the same generic stock sound, sounds that you could probably find on YouTube. It, I don't like the music. And there's even like hardcore sounds during, like hardcore rock sounds during uh, like some of the death scenes. They have like a rock version of like Moonlight Sonata playing. It's just like, what the fuck is this? So I'm not a fan of the music in these movies, but that's not the main thing that's shitty about this film. What's bad about this film is the characters don't care about any of them, don't know any of them, none of them stand out. Once again, just cannon fodder, bad acting, and bad set designs. This is the cheapest looking movie of the six. Like, you thought two looked cheap? This movie looks cheap. It literally looks like cardboard cutout buildings. Like, th that lot that they're on, th th that street, looks like a fake road. It looks like just the fronts. It looks like it's just the faces of buildings and not like actual buildings. It looks so fake. And they keep talking about this giant festival, the Mountain Man Festival that's supposedly bigger than Burning Man. There's going to be like thousands of people there. Where is everybody? There's streamers in downtown, but not a single soul. But they keep talking about the party throughout the movie. The sheriff's like, well, you know, the festival is going to be over soon, so people might be coming over. Like, So the festival is like outside of town and no one's even driving through town like there would be cars and there would still be people there where is everybody this movie just suffers the most from its low budget than the other ones this one just feels the most low budget and it's so cheap and just awful the acting the characters pinhead is in this movie uh what's the actor's name fuck I'm blank on it but pinhead you know who he is doug bradley he is in this movie and even he is awful like, he is just so redundant. His character just constantly hyping up, you know, his friends. Like, oh, they're coming to get me. They're going to do this to you. They're going to fuck you up. And then I'm going to rape you. I'm going to kill you. They're coming any minute now. He's just saying the same thing again and again and again. I just want to slap him in his fucking face. And it's over the top. It's annoying just how repetitive this guy was. My boy has already got to her on the street. Shut the fuck up, old man. You can say what you like, college boy, but your reckoning is on its way. God, shut up! And the fact that this whole movie, like 80% of it takes place in a small county jail was another bad mistake because there's no atmosphere in this film. The setting sucks. It's just a jail cell. Imagine Friday the 13th Part 6, and it only took place at Sheriff Garris's you know, county jail, that place, the whole time. And then Jason Jason was just kind of like lurking around the place and they eventually one of them would go out every now and then to get help and then they, they got picked off. That's what that that's what this movie is. If they just stood in the fucking jail the whole time and Jason lives. It's not a good setting. And it's just, it's boring. This movie was boring just like part six. And <sighs> The makeup on their faces, the the killers in this movie, it's just dreadful. It's getting worse and worse. Three Finger, he's laughing every time he's on screen. 
way too much. It was creepy in part one. Now it's too much. Quit laughing. There's nothing funny. So yeah, the dialogue, especially from Pinhead, who at one point calls the other killers Pinheads. Thought that was kind of funny. His dialogue, like I said, repetitive, trashy, just did not like it. And there was CGI blood and some of the deaths that looks absolutely dreadful. And the jail said, it's just bad. So it's not worth checking out. It's best, it's best if you just like watch clips of like the death scenes online and that's it. So final thoughts. This is a movie that is only good at creating gruesome kills but not good at creating almost anything else. So when it comes to Wrong Turn 5, don't watch this movie. Skip it because it is wasted time. Spoiler discussion. Let's talk very quickly about this movie. So prequel or sequel, what is this? I don't know. They don't really say much. Um, but at one point, they there's like a computer that says 2003. So I guess this is after part four. We get this reporter chick, she's running around the woods in like this Kill Bill outfit, and she gets her middle finger sliced off. So there's some dark comedy in here, some little comedic moments that are actually kind of making me chuckle because of how stupid they were. She gets her hand chopped off by Pinhead, and her hand's on the ground, and it says, Five! Wrong turn! Title card. Pretty cool. Very funny, and that's the best part of the movie. They always find a tree to crash into in these movies whenever they... You know, see someone on the road or an animal instead of just like breaking, they just want to keep swerving around. They lose control. They crash into the one tree in the in that area, it's like, and then the car is dead. And then, for some reason, the cannibals don't attack the cops when they're there. Like, why not? You know, there's only two cops. Their business partner Pinhead is handcuffed on the ground, and they don't try to just rescue him then and there. Like, all they had to do was use their accurate skills of, you know, throwing knives and bow and arrows and shit. Like, they could have just shot the one cop with an arrow. The other two could have attacked the one other cop. And all the other kids are defenseless. They could have killed them all right then and there. Right there on the road. And the movie would have been over. But, nope. They're just like, no, we don't know what to do. So we'll just let our friend get taken away to jail. And then we'll try to slowly capture him by the end of the movie. Like... So stupid. And then, so yeah, they they kill the cop. They like slice his ear off. And it's clearly CG. Then they take out the cell phone tower. They take out the power plant where Bucky is. Don't pull that Halloween shit on me. And <laughs> I always like to quote movies when I can. Um, yeah, his name tag should have said Bucky. Should have said Bucky. And so yeah, they electrocute that dumbass. And then they go downtown and there's nobody there. Yeah, single soul. Where is everybody? And Three Finger has his mask on for one scene, and it's actually scarier than the fake-looking face he has below. So they should have just kept that mask on his face. Then there's this whole, like, porn scenario set up where this overweight officer just has this beautiful, smoking hot young lady walk up to him, and she's like, I don't have passes. Can you get me some? And he's like, well, I got some passes in my car. Let me show you or something like that. Like he takes her, like they should play porn music over it. He takes her into the back of his police cruiser and they start fucking. I think I took a wrong turn. Can you tell me how to get backstage? Another wrong turn, huh? I can show you, but you need a pass to get in. I will do anything to get a pass. Like, was that set up? Like clearly, right? That was like someone he knew. And they just were, like, role-playing while he was on the job. Like, he's a real cop. It's not like he's dressing up. Right? Like, <laughs> what is up with that scene? Nothing happens with those characters. Like, they're just fucking. Like, it's, I guess it's explaining why he's too busy to, like, answer his radio where she's, like, calling him, I guess. I don't know. But, like, there should have been more kills in this movie. There should have been, like, carnage at the festival. And speaking of the festival... So it's mountain men themed. Like the mask that they're all wearing at this festival kind of resemble like Three Finger especially. So it's like, do they know about these cannibals in the woods? And they're like celebrating them? Why would they do that? If if they're like a real thing, like there's actual real killers out there that are still on the loose. I don't know. Like it just reminded me of like Hellraiser or Hellworld, where they're just like they're dressing up like Pinhead. Hey Pinhead, he's in this movie. But <laughs> Yeah, they're wearing, like, the mask and shit, and then there's never really a festival in the movie. And 
It's just a dumbass setup. For what reason? I guess it's just a coincidence that the theme is mountain men and there's actually mountain men attacking them. It's just a joke, I guess. Then, yeah, the blonde girl, she gets disemboweled. It's kind of a shocking kill because you kind of expect her to be like the final girl, but she's not. She gets fed her own intestines. And then we get this girl having sex with her boyfriend while she's wearing a blanket over her tits. Like, like all women do, I guess, right? No, that's not real. Like, who the fuck does that? It's clearly an actress who wouldn't show her body, so they threw a blanket on her, but it's like, who does that? Who has sex, you know, the boyfriend on top of her, and she's just got the blanket over her boobs, like, you can fuck me, but you can't look at my boobs. Like, ugh, that just irritated me. And they have, like, a hundred candles now. I guess they went to a candle store at some point. So how did they find their hotel? So did they specifically go to their hotel room looking for them? If so, how did they know they were there? And how did they know they were at that room? Or was it just a coincidence and they were actually going room to room, killing all kinds of people, and we just never got to see it? I don't know. It just seems like a coincidence that they found them at the hotel and just picked their room, knew where they were, just they were looking for them specifically. I don't know. I like that we get like this reverse mirror scare. Like usually it's the bad guy behind the protagonist and she like shuts the mirror and you see the person. But in this movie, it's like uh, Sawtooth, he shuts the mirror and the victim is behind him and scares him and it hits him over the head. I thought that was pretty cool. It's the reverse. And, and she stabs him and he feels pain. I thought they didn't feel pain. And, and then we get like this misery scene where this guy's like tied up on the truck and he, they're like taking sledgehammers to his legs. They're breaking his legs and his bones are like sticking out. It's awesome. And then they like throw him on the road and they just let him scream for a bit and they wait for them to like go outside and check on him. And then when they when they get out, they just run him over in front of his friends. Awesome. Just seeing the body like roll underneath the tires and crumple. And oh, that was an awesome kill. So great kills, but nothing else great about this movie. And then she like deputizes them, like, you're all deputized, grab a shotgun. Even you, town drunk, grab a shotgun. <laughs> and so then we get like this stoner named Teddy. You want to give Teddy Bear a kiss? He's like on this radio and he doesn't believe them. They're calling for help. He doesn't believe them, of course. And his computer says 2003. So that's the only thing that's like continuity where it's like, oh, so this has to take place before part one, but also at some point like after part four, right? So... That's the only like scene in there that actually connects it somehow. I like that this guy gets hit so hard with the shovel that he like does a full backflip. <laughs> He's like running around the corner, gets hit, and he like, does like a full backflip. And then they both get carried out to like the soccer field, and this guy's got like this big farm equipment. It's like a harvester or something. He's got like all these like blades spinning, and then he, his head gets chewed up and spit out. And then the other guy gets ran over feet first, so he's like alive when its legs are getting chopped up so he has to feel all of that so it's not like an instant death you know so he actually was suffering for a bit but the other guy he got a quick death because it was just his head it's very sleepaway camp three with the girl who gets buried up to her neck and the lawnmower goes on her head and then this guy named mose i think his name is just mose he gets baked alive put in like a barrel and they drill holes in it to allow like the smoke to go in i guess or something <clears throat> And he gets baked alive. That's an even worse way to die. She lets Pinhead out of the cage because she's like desperate. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't like her odds. So she lets Pinhead out. And even though she has a gun to him, he like somehow pulls this maneuver where he like turns around so quick and slashes at her eyes so quick that she doesn't even have time to shoot. And when she does fire a shot off camera, she misses. He's right in front of her. I don't see how she missed but she did. But she loses her eyeballs. Good good for her. She deserved it. She's an idiot. You're gonna be alright. You're gonna be alright. My eyes! I'm my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Uh, why not kill Pinhead? Like, sh the sheriff, she shoots him right in the shoulder. Of course. Shoots him right in the shoulder and should have just blown him away right then and there. Like, he escaped the cell. He just attacked another woman, took her eyes out. And she's just like so hell bent on making sure that he makes it to like a prison to get lethal injection. She's like, oh, 
I'm going to be there when they stick that needle in you. Like she really just wants to see him get the lethal injection instead of just doing justice on her own and blasting that motherfucker away like a rational human being would. So then there's like this disembowel trap. This movie turns into like saw, like just saw traps. This one has the most traps of the franchise. This guy has like a sickle already in his stomach, but for some reason there's no blood. And when she opens up the door, it like rips up his chest and like disembowels him. Like she didn't see the strings and everything. She could have went around and opened the side door to like help him. Like she like looked in the car for a few seconds before opening that door. And she didn't see the sickle, the string, like it's very visible, but whatever. <clears throat> she killed her own husband. And so apparently she has like two bullets in the chamber. She like fires like one or two bullets and it's like, oh, it's empty. Uh. It's like, where did all the other bullets go? I don't remember her shooting a ton of bullets in the movie, but she just conveniently runs out so that the killers can live. And she dies because she gets caught and put in this shotgun trap. Again, like a Saul movie. Like, you know, live or die, make your choice. But in this decision, it's it's like die or die, make your choice. You want to die by fire? Or do you want to die by the shotgun that's rigged to where if you put your heels down, the bullet's going to blow your head off? And, you know, she gets to the point where she's like, fuck it. She can't take the heat no more. So she just lets her legs down, blows her own brains right out. And then the blind girl, she's just walking down the road. And for some reason, she lost her bandages somehow. Like she had bandages on her eyes when she left the police station. And then when she's on the road, she's got no bandages. But they pick her up and she hears that it's the bad guys picking her up. And they're basically going to rape and murder that bitch. And it's a gruesome, dark ending Like to think about like what they're going to do to her. Like That's a fucked up ending. So yeah, it's got a very dark ending and cool kills but nothing else really redeeming about it so the hockey mask award for best character is the sheriff uh she sheriff carter she's the best actress in the movie and makes the best decisions except for the, the, the decision to open that door and kill her husband the Hanky award for worst character will be maynard aka pinhead because he's just fucking annoying so redundant and just won't shut his trap and the hottest chick in this movie is that hooker or wh whatever she is who fucks that cop in the back of the police car. And the clapper award for best scene is the soccer field scene with the two guys who get chopped into itty bitty pieces. Very graphic and violent. And the Mr. Hat award is Julian who gets chopped into thousands of pieces by the harvesting uh, farm equipment thing. And the Mr. Twig Award for worst kill in this movie is the power plant guy who gets electrocuted. And those are my thoughts on Rock Turn 5. Let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like what you've seen, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, Alpha Fantasy.